Okay, next question, Pastor Steve. It says, I recently watched a documentary on a church that takes handling serpents and uh, serpents in Mark 16 and incorporates that into their church services. Could you explain that and why do people interpret this as a sign or something to prove your faith? Uh, because they're not reading the, um, the gospels, basically. You know, when you, when you go through and you look at uh, what Jesus had to say about these types of, of situations, uh, there was a point where uh, Satan was tempting Jesus. I'm going to read this out of Matthew's gospel. And it, it, says, it says this, Then the devil took him up. This is uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 5. And then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it's written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, it's written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And so the devil puts Jesus into a position where he's basically saying, prove your faith, prove who you are. Uh, we all know that since you're the son of God, that God's not going to allow you to die. So just jump off this high point. And, the, and he even quotes scripture. That's, that's one of the crazy things about this passage. Satan quotes scripture. So just because somebody's quoting the Bible doesn't mean that they're from God. And so Satan quotes scripture here. He quotes it out of, out of its context, but he does quote it. And then Jesus answers, you're not to tempt the Lord your God. And so there is a difference between God protecting me from something because I've fallen into a situation or uh, because somebody's trying to do something rotten to me versus I walk into it and go, God... I'm, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot here. You need, to, um, you need to show up and you need to protect me from this or that. Um, and if you don't, it's all on you. That's tempting the Lord. And so the Bible's clear on the fact that I'm not to do that. Um, in the passage that these guys get this from, it's out of Mark chapter 16. And it says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Well, that's not talking about uh, people who are going out and doing these things, especially taking up serpents and drinking poison. It's not talking about people who are going out and doing that on their own to prove their faith. What that's talking about is the fact that God protects people until it's time for them to go home. And so uh, you have the example of Paul. And he's shipwrecked on an island, and he's out gathering wood for a fire. And when he tosses the wood into the fire, there's a, there's a viper in, uh, in the wood. He's doing it in the dark. And there's a viper in the wood. It latches onto his arm. And everybody on, everybody on the island knows that the guy should die because it's a poisonous viper. And so they wait around for him to die because they think he's a murderer. But he shakes it off into the fire, and he's not harmed by it. Well, that's what that verse is talking about, that God is going to protect Paul the Apostle, specifically in this instance, until it's time for Paul to go home. God didn't protect Paul the Apostle all of his life, because there came a point where the Romans took him out on the Appian Way. They had him kneel down. They cut his head off. And so God didn't protect him at every point in his life, but until God was done with him, that's what he did. Paul didn't go out looking for serpents. That's, that's not what was, what was going on there. And you can't see that anywhere in Scripture. And so that is a misreading of Scripture. That's a misapplication of Scripture. And it's a violation of the commandment of God that you're not to tempt him. And so it's not a good thing. And people died because of it. So Yeah, I've seen guys over the years, and, and a lot of times it's a generational thing in the sense of, you know, a person will start it and then pass it down to his kids and his church is usually like the side of his family. Yeah. And I've seen things where like the dad has died of a snake bite and the son's doing it and he's still getting bit. And it's like, come on. Yeah. Not to mention that like in the uh, gifts of the spirit thing, if, if people walk into your church and you're chanting and holding snakes and doing the whole snake charm, charming thing, what do you think that they're going to do with the gospel of Christ? Right. Yeah. You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the stuff, uh, that Christians do end up just being Christian superstition. You know, we we uh, we take scripture out of context and we do weird things, and it's just nothing but superstition. And what we need to do is stick to the Word of God, stick to what the Bible has to say. Every every practice that we're doing 
we need to be able to look at it and go, is this in scripture? Is this, a, is this how it was done in the book of Acts? Is this, is, how, is this how it was done in the Bible? And it needs to be from a good example, not a bad example. So there are churches where everybody spoke in tongues at the same time. It was a church at Corinth, and Paul said, stop it. It was a bad example. And so I don't need to be doing what the Corinthians were doing. And, uh, you know, there, there are churches that uh, actually, you know, most of my bad examples are from Corinth. And so you can, you can have bad examples in all kinds of areas. The Corinthians were, a uh, guy was sleeping with his, mom, with his stepmom. Uh, other people were going to court against unbelievers, ripping each other off. Uh, they were despising people at the, at the Lord's, uh, Lord's Supper, making sure that certain people uh, didn't get, it, get to eat at the potlucks and you know, all kinds of nonsense was going on. And so there's stuff that you see in the Bible that churches do that they shouldn't be doing. Yeah. You know? And what we should be doing is the things that God's commanded us and, and not doing the silliness. So. All right, we're out of time. Wow. Good to go. Yep. Yeah.